Hey, what's going on? If you want to be part of the Intellectual Property School, what you need to do is go below and fill out the app. What's the Intellectual Property School? It's a curriculum of holding companies, operating companies, YouTube training, all the things you need to get you to become part of that corporate citizen crowd making $250,000 per year. So if you want to be part of the Intellectual Property School, go below, fill out the app, and if we have a meeting in the minds, you will get an invite for a live conversation about you becoming a member of the Intellectual Property School. All right, so let's go ahead and have this conversation. You have a holding company and you want to set up your operating companies, right? Now, there are many, many, many people who are confused about what is a holding company. So let's go ahead and talk about that. A holding company could be a C-Corp, it could be a partnership, it could be a trust, it could be many, many different things. What is a holding company? A holding company is an entity that manages and controls other companies. You could call a holding company the management company. The only job of a holding company is to manage other companies. So essentially, this is one of the things that we do in our training because this is a very, very powerful concept. Did you know that when you deploy the holding company situation, you can get massive business credit in a very short period of time? That's just one of the benefits of a holding company. And here is another thing that you do with the holding company. The holding company is the management company, which means that no one does business with the holding company because the holding company is managing the operating companies. So there is no possibility of a lawsuit of other issues happening with the holding company unless you, the owner of the holding company, does something stupid. And because you're the owner of the holding company, that is one of your assets. And that's the only way that a holding company can be sued because the holding company isn't actually doing business with anyone except the operating companies. And let's go ahead and go ahead and say, if one of your operating companies gets sued, can they sue the holding company? Absolutely not. So this creates a very serious situation for you to protect your main business. And with a holding company, there are so many things that you can do and some things you can set up. It's unbelievable the things that you can really do. And I get a lot of questions like, what percentages should the operating companies pass up to the holding company? And this is something that's really, really cool. When you set up a holding company that in turn sets up operating companies or in turn buys operating companies, you are what I call the kingmaker. You can decide to do anything that you want to do with your holding company. You can decide to do anything you want to do with your operating companies. So once you go ahead and get that set up, that's the first thing. You must set up the operating company, whether it's a holding company. Well, you must set up the holding company first, excuse me, holding company, whether it's a C Corp, an LLC, a partnership or a trust or any one of these management entities. That's the first thing that comes because one of the things that I consistently get a lot of questions about, hey, Glendon, I already have a company that's up running, it's making money, it is paying taxes. Can that be my holding company? And my answer is probably not. And this is what I advise people to do, to go out, to create a holding company, to create this situation, and then sell that operating company to the holding company. And this is an administrative, simple, simple task. And this is one of the things I always do because there are many ways that you have to do this to be legal and ethical and abide by all the rules because with their internal revenue service. And I always recommend for my students to start off with a brand new holding company that hasn't done business that hasn't filed taxes, that hasn't done any of those things. So that's the first thing that you have to do. Now that we've got that done, the holding company must be situated, formed, and set up first before we get to the operating company because the holding company will in turn be the organizing entity of the operating company. So you go ahead, you have your holding company, holding company, EIN, 
business checking. You have all of that set up before you even begin to think about setting up your operating company. Now, once you set up your operating company, the holding company will be the organizer of the operating company, which means the holding company will in fact be the owner of the operating company. And if you're really, really sophisticated, you can go ahead and set up your holding company to be set up where your name is not on it. So your holding company then owns the operating company. And then when the people go and do their Google search, they will not find out who owns this. And this is one of the ways that you can protect yourself against lawsuits because it's, it's really, this is a mission by an, an anonymity that they don't know who owns this company. They have no clue to what's doing. Holding company first, all of that set up. And then we go ahead and we set up our first operating company. And this is one of the things that I teach in my training, the intellectual property school, because even though we're talking about intellectual property, it's very, very important for you to have your business paperwork set up before you get into business. Cause once you get in business, you're going to be really, really busy. And these things tend to go to the wayside. So now you've got your holding company set up, and then you go ahead and set up your first operating company. And one of the things that we do in the intellectual property school is we set up a very simple operating company because one of the things that we want to do once this situation is set up, your holding company and your operating company, this makes it really, really easy to set up other businesses in the future. Now you're asking, why is that? First of all, holding company, operating company, you're making money, you're paying yourself. So you don't have to go through those procedures when you're starting other companies. And in fact, one of the things that I teach is that you should start three to four operating companies at the same time to provide yourself some amazing benefits in the future. You got your holding company, you got your operating company, and you will set that up because one of the things that we do in the intellectual property school, the application to sign up for that is below, is we teach you a very sane, effective, and simple methodology for setting this up because this is one of the things. There's a lot of really successful, business owners out there who have businesses that are making money and their corporate structure is a hot mess. They don't have a holding company. They may actually have three or four companies under different LLCs and they don't have a holding company and they're paying way more in taxes than they would if they had set up a holding company and they understood these principles. Now you have your first operating company. And one of the things that I recommend for the first operating company is to have a home-based business where then you can start to get all types of tax benefits. I use this, my, my vehicle, I actually bought, and the, you know, you should subscribe and hit the bell notification thing to be aware of this because I'll do a video on talking about this. I have a brand new car that I bought in my company name. So that's a company asset. Now, because the car is less than 6,000 pounds, I cannot write all of it off using bonus depreciation, but I can write off 20% a year. And since my brand new car is a 2022 911 Turbo S that gives me roughly about $50,000 a year for the next five years that I can write off my taxes for that car. And it's gonna be quite easy because the car is titled in the business name, the car is registered in the business name, and has a business tag. This is one of the things that we get to do. So I get to write off my car, I get to write off my internet, I get to write off my cell phone, I get to write off some of my power, I get to write off um, my, I don't really, I really don't have a gas bill. I think that's part of the community. But essentially, and I also have a physical office that's a part and aside from this, and I get to write that off. So the way that we teach you how to do this is to go ahead and get that first company and to go ahead and get some tax benefits because here's the thing, and here's the honest truth. For you to go start your business, it's going to take some time for you to go from a zero to a hero. And this is one of the ways that, let's say you came here, you found this information, and let's say it was July. 
and you got to start it, do you understand that you can go ahead and start from July to December and go ahead and get tax benefits that you normally would not have, which depending upon what you make could be quite significant. Holding company sets up the operating company and then with the operating company, you would have one operating checking account unless you have employees. Now, this is one of the things um, my I have probably 15 different checking accounts for my companies, but many of these are single checking accounts. Uh, I use Mercury where you can just set up a single checking account. So if you have a business like a YouTube business or an intellectual property business, you can typically get away with one checking account for that business. But let's say you have a car rental business, which is I used to have, then I had uh, multiple checking accounts. I had a business credit card for this. So it really depends upon what is that operating company doing to make money, which will dictate do you need to have all of these other things as part of your operating company banking structure? Because once again, structure is everything. This is the United States of America. Paperwork is everything. Paperwork rules the land. Paperwork will set you up in an amazing position for you to be extremely successful and profitable. So holding company, then operating company. Now with your holding company, you will have what's called an operating agreement with the holding company spelling out what you're going to do, how you're going to set it up, who gets paid. Do you give a this, you know, with my holding company, I have it set up in the operating agreement where I can pay myself a dividend whenever I want to. And once again, and this is an internal document. Now, when you go out to get certain levels of business credit, they may ask for this document, they may not. But do you need an operating agreement between the holding company and the operating company? No, why? Why don't you need an operating agreement? Because the holding company owns the operating company. It owns it. So the holding company is, I want you to think, of Geppetto and Pinocchio and Geppetto's got Pinocchio on strings. That's the holding company managing the operating company. And you can set it up to pay yourself any way that you want to, because essentially what you would do is write a check from the operating company up to the holding company with the proceeds that you can call a profit. And then you can incorporate that into the payment system that's already established because you set up your holding company, you set up your operating company. It's already established, so you only have to go through that. So let's go ahead and say, you have your holding company, you have your first operating company, which should be a home-based business. And then you, you're doing this about two years and your home-based business is making, let's say $250,000 a year. And then you have this ideal, you see something, you're really excited about it. And then you go ahead and once again, what do I train you to do? To have multiple companies already set up because this will be of extreme benefit for you in the future. So you can just go ahead and take one of these companies that's already set up, that already has business checking, that already has an EIN, and then move that towards the new company that you want to start. And let's say the company, your first company, your holding company, operating company is running quite well. Then you start this new thing and it doesn't really work out. Guess what? Because you have created this company in a corporate structure, this gives you vast benefits to write this off. Now, I should give you a word of caution. You don't want to be writing off a lot of stuff when you're in the pursuit of, say, buying a house or buying a car or something significant like that, because that's not going to look really good to the underwriters of the mortgage company, because they're going to go through your business documents, your business taxes, when they find tooth and cone. And if you have a lot of administrative write-offs, not, you know, logical deductions, if you have write-downs, that's going to impact the underwriter's influence, whether to give you this mortgage or not. So essentially, you want to start a new company after you have your house and all this other stuff. Now you got your company and then this could give you a lot of tax deductions to offset the income that your primary operating company is making. I mean, uh, for me, when I had this car rental company and it didn't work out well, this gave me tax deductions for not one year, but two years. So even though I didn't really lose money on paper, it looks like 
I lost money. And this gives me tax deductions for, you know, 20, 2021 and 2022. 2023, I will not be having those. But essentially, having that holding company properly set up and to own your operating companies gives you amazing benefits in the future, gives you amazing things that you can break off, gives you amazing things that you can do because I'll share a story with you. One of my operating companies that I just created for a purpose that I decided to change my mind on. It was literally two years and six months old and I went to a bank and I emerged from that bank with $75,000 worth of business credit because all of my paperwork was in order. I got a $25,000 business credit card and a $50,000 line of credit. So these are the things that you can do once you understand the holding company situation, once you understand the relationship to the operating company. And this is something that we go over in fine detail into the intellectual property school. This is how you wanna do it because once again, set up your holding company and I advise you to set up three to four operating companies at the same time so your operating companies can age. So if you wanna be part of the intellectual property school, one of the things you can do is go below, fill out the app to ask you a lot of questions. And I wanna say shout out and to a lot of people who filled out the app, you've been putting down and some really amazing answers, so I really appreciate that. But go below, fill out the app, and if we come to a meeting in the minds, then I will send you a link where you can hook up to schedule a live phone call where we can discuss you becoming part of the intellectual property school in the very recent future. So that's all I got for you guys. My name is Glenn Cameron. I will see you guys in the next video.